Sound speeds. This is going to be a neat review. Don't believe me? Well, behave yourself and pay attention so you don't end up beating yourself up later. If you haven't heard of these before, go grab yourself a root beer and prepare to be bedazzled as I introduce you to these two beefy mics. Seriously, these are both beasts, and you probably already see that they look beyond cool. You ready to begin? That's the end of the bee puns, I promise. Now, full disclosure. Neat Microphones did send me the worker bee in exchange for a fair and honest review. I get to keep it following the review, but I'm not going to allow that to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest review. And just so it's been said, anytime we are listening to the audio of either the king or the worker bee, I'm not going to be doing any post-processing on them at all. I'm going to be level batching them, but that's it. I thought about reviewing the King Bee microphone along with the Worker Bee, but in good conscience, I can't do that because I'm already biased in its favor. Why? Well, perhaps episode number nine of Mass Mics will give you an idea. So I continue to kind of silently, you know, when I say silently, I mean, my mind was not working at all. I was just enjoying the music and looking out of the dance floor. And at one point this confetti cannon went off and it blasted these chunks of confetti that are maybe about half an inch by about two inches long. And they flew all over the place. And just, I was like, you know, it was right as the music built to a peak and then went like this. And this is about half an hour after I was there. And I'm standing up there and just kind of looking over the dance floor, loving every bit of this, just watching the, the whole show and everybody going crazy. And as you can guess, the King B microphone is one of the two mass mics featured in that episode. But which one is it? Microphone number one or microphone number two? Can we at least agree that they both sound similar? Would you at least agree with me on that? Why don't we look at the reveal from episode number 10 of Mass Mics and see what they are. But for right now, let's unmask microphone number one, which is the Neat Microphones King B. And microphone number two is the Neumann TLM 103. The $100 King B microphone sounds that close to a Neumann TLM 103. That's why I'm biased in this microphone's favor. But the Worker B is an entirely different microphone altogether. And that's the reason why I'm going to review the Worker B in this video and, when applicable, compare it to the King B. At the time of this video, the King Bee is selling for $100 and the Worker Bee for $90, but that's not always been the case. The King Bee used to sell for $350 while the Worker Bee sold for $200. So why the price drop? There's been a lot of buzz going around about neat microphones, so before I agreed to do this review, I wanted to make sure that the company was financially stable. That way, if a viewer decided to buy a neat microphone, they wouldn't be buying from a company just selling off stock before filing for bankruptcy, thereby completely invalidating the entire warranty. So here's the real deal. Skipper Wise and his partners founded Blue Microphones and later sold them only to partner up with Gibson Guitars and start neat microphones. In May of 2011, Gibson filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy with about $500 million in debt. This allowed Skipper and his partners who believed that Neat was a very promising company to buy Neat microphones from Gibson for a really good price. They want to grow the company through marketing and social media, so they decided to lower the prices on their existing microphone line so Neat microphones is alive and better than ever. This is the box that the Worker B microphone comes in, and I think you'll agree with me that this box is huge. The box itself is cardboard with a plastic outer theme design, sporting beehive-inspired honeycomb-looking ports in it, revealing the artwork on the cardboard box within. Remove the top of the box with the beekeeper on it, flip up the lid, and you're looking at a hexagonal-shaped user manual, and under that, a card recommending that you register the mic at neatmic.com to activate the three-year warranty. The user manual is very well put together, containing everything from specs to how to care for the microphone to recording tips and tricks for all kinds of different uses, from vocals to a variety of instruments. The instructions are in both English and French and are very well written and even fun to read. The plastic inner shell contains individually wrapped components, including the beekeeper shock mount, the honeycomb pop filter, a 5 27 mic stand to 3 16 boom arm adapter, two extra long screws for attaching the microphone to the beekeeper shock mount, and a little bee-themed spinny toy. The shock mount is called the beekeeper, fitting for the black and white bee-themed microphone. It's well put together and designed to screw into the base of the worker bee microphone with ease, and will hold without dropping. The honeycomb pop filter is plastic and looks like honeycomb, with a very fine screen inside which blocks the wind. The worker bee weighs almost one pound and is built like a tank, just like the king bee, which weighs over one and a half pounds. There are no switches on the microphone, just a little XLR port on the bottom and a little B on the back that lights up when the microphone has 48 volt phantom power flowing through it. 
The only place that gives it all on this microphone is the front grill, but it's oversized, so I guess that's to be expected. But I'll tell you, not a bit of this microphone or the King B feels cheap in any way. The diaphragm on the inside of the Worker B is 24 millimeters in diameter, while on the King B, it's oversized at 34 millimeters in diameter. And that's probably part of the reason why this microphone is able to pick up frequencies as low as 16 hertz. You can't really hear that low, so it's kind of a moot point, and most people are going to be rolling off frequencies that low anyway. It's also interesting to note that the frequency response chart for the King B shows a range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, while on the Worker B, it's 70 to 15,000 hertz. That's certainly enough to pick up the full human extended vocal range, but not enough for some instruments, so it'd be nice to see a full impulse response graph for 20 to 20,000 hertz. Comparing some of the other specs of the King and Worker B, you'll notice that both have pretty impressive maximum SPLs at 140 and 145 decibels. The specs list the sensitivity of each microphone at 26 and 19 millivolts per pascal at 1K, which is negative 31.7 and negative 34.4 decibels if you're wondering. Another interesting thing to note is that on the specifications of the King B, the polar pattern is listed as cardioid, but resembles more of a hypercardioid pattern if we're honest. On the Worker B, if you double check the specifications based on numbers reported, the signal to noise ratio should either be 84.5 decibels A weighted or the self noise should be 15 decibels A weighted. And if you listen to the mic, I think it is probably the signal to noise ratio that's off. Just listen to the noise floor, both mics. Now we're going to be listening to both the Worker B and the King B approximately four or so inches off of my mouth, and neither microphone is wearing the honeycomb pop filter that it comes with. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I want you to be able to hear the microphones in full clarity without anything obstructing it. The microphones are going to be more prone to plosives now for that reason, so keep that in mind. But I'm only about four or so inches off of my mouth. Now, listen to the clarity, the detail, how much that it's just pulling out my voice. It sounds very natural. You can hear all the little crinklies and stuff in my mouth because I'm a little bit on the cotton mouth side because I forgot to bring a bottle of water in here when I started to record tonight. Now I'm gonna back off to about six or so inches off of my mouth and just so you know, I'm gonna be compensating in post to bring it up to the same level. And this is the way I sound approximately six inches off of both of these microphones. And in case you're wondering, both of them are angled ever so slightly inwards towards my mouth. So that way I'm in the sweet spot of both microphones. I'm gonna back off even farther now. Now approximately maybe about a foot or so off of both of these microphones. Straight down the barrel on both of them, this is how I sound a little bit off of each microphone. Now we're going to engage the proximity effect on both of these microphones, starting with the Worker B. I'm now only about one inch off of the 24 millimeter diameter on the Worker B microphone, and you're going to hear all the crinkles and pops in my voice. It's an abundance of bass. It's a very intimate sound. And that's not just a microphone that you hear that bass on. If I were to whisper in your ear, you would hear all the bass in my voice because it's a very intimate sound. It takes a lot more power for you to thrust out lower frequencies into the air than it does the mids and highs. That's one of the reasons why. Now I'm going to transition over to the King B where you're going to hear even more low end. And that's because it's a 34 millimeter diameter diaphragm. Now, by me speaking into this microphone and the other microphone, the Worker B, directly off axis, it's still looking directly at my mouth, but I'm speaking across it, so I'm not going to be killing it nearly as much with plosives. But that's the way that the King B and the Worker B sound if I'm engaging that proximity effect. Very, very close miking the King B and the Worker B. This is the Worker B and this is the King Bee. So now you have an idea of how they both sound when you engage the proximity effect and get very, very close. Now I'm back to being approximately six inches or so off of both of these microphones. Now, if you push the proximity effect too much on a large diaphragm microphone with an overly large diaphragm like this 34 millimeter diameter King B diaphragm, then you really start to get overwhelmed with bass very quickly. So keep that in mind. Both of these microphones, I think, sound very pleasant at different distances. And at the price point, why not get them both? Now, I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself on the review point part. I just get very excited with these two microphones because I'm very impressed by both of them. Now, let me talk briefly about the appearance difference between the two of them. The Worker B is shorter. That's basically it. It has only got one little bitty yellow rubber band going around it versus the, the King B that has three. And that's really not a huge deal. Now, when you talk about huge deal, why don't we talk about the maximum SPL? 
If I were to yell into these microphones, for example, I'm now speaking into the Worker B microphone at a very low volume, and I'm raising my voice louder and louder so that I can test the maximum SPL of this microphone, which is around 145 decibels. I'm now screaming into the microphone at full volume now! I'm now speaking into the King B microphone, slightly off axis, so that way my breath is not blasting this microphone with plosives. And I'm raising my voice louder and louder so that we can test the maximum SPL level, which is 140 decibels! I'm now screaming into the microphone at full volume now! The entire outside of the honeycomb pop filter is one piece of plastic, followed by a screen and then a second piece of plastic on the inside holding against the screen itself. Now, there is an important note about that, and that is that the inner screen, which can pop out, needs to be in a perfect alignment with the outer screen. Otherwise, the honeycomb will look different and it won't line up perfectly. And if that happens, you're going to be blocking out way too much of your sound. To put on the honeycomb pop filter, you look around the entire inside rim for that little dent right there. You align that dent to the little bitty chrome bit that holds up the diaphragm and then snap it in position, just like that. If you do it any other way, like try to just push it straight on the front, that inside plastic bit that goes against the screen could come off and then it's going to be loose and rattling on the inside. You don't want that to happen. The honeycomb pop filter does a pretty good job, but I want you to listen to this. Pesky porcupines prefer pink pickles. Big boys bow before beavis. You almost hear my breath going against the the honeycomb plastic a little bit. And it doesn't really whistle, but it sounds like it changes the sound just a little bit. And the screen may even pop a little bit because of how big it is with my breath nailing it. But I also want you to listen to this. I'm going to take off that windscreen for just a second. And I'm speaking into the microphone so you can hear how I sound before I add it back. And now the windscreen is now between my mouth and the microphone. I didn't change anything. I'm still speaking directly into it. And my hands aren't blocking it at all. The only difference is the windscreen is now in place. But as soon as I remove it, you can hear how the presence and air frequencies come right back into the microphone. So if you have something like a Stedman pop filter or some other pop filter that you like, not a... Uh, you know foamy to stick on top of it then you might want to use that instead of the honeycomb even though it does look pretty darn cute the beekeeper shock mount does a great job of isolating the microphone from the vibrations of the outside world just listen to this even the shock mount itself versus the microphone so you can tell it does a pretty good job and if i were to even shake this around which you normally shouldn't do you're hearing the cable hit the stand but it still does, does a really good job. All in all, I really like the sound of the Worker Bee microphone, just like I like the sound of the King Bee. They both add something different to your voice. And considering the price point, you might as well get both of them, to be completely honest. But keep in mind that if you try to mount them sideways, it's kind of heavy. You've heard me state throughout this review how impressed I am with the microphone and all of its accessories that it comes with. But one thing I glossed over was the bag. Not only is it embroidered in kind of a velvety type material, it's got even an inner lining. Now, it is noisy, but it probably can resist dirt, dust, maybe even water, a light spill, something like that. Not that I would suggest you throwing dust or water on it to test it, but it's nice quality, but geez, it sure is noisy. One last thing I want to point out is that Neat Microphones also sells a premium XLR cable called the B-Line. This thing looks great and really sets off the look of the King and Worker Bees. And let me tell you about the quality. It is nylon wrapped. It's a thick cable. It's got heavy duty, premium, custom made XLR connectors. This thing is solid and I tested it. It works great too. So what do I think of the Worker Bee? As if you need to ask. I give it two big thumbs up, just like I do the King Bee. And I know that's technically not a review of the King Bee, but those are both great microphones and they both sound different too and add something different. You can really get up on a Worker Bee microphone much closer and engage that proximity effect because it's flatter than you can a King Bee. But the King Bee brings out the bass at a farther distance and they both sound really good. And for less than $200 for both of them, Geez, that's a deal. Once again, there are links down in the description if you'd like to check out any of the microphones that I've reviewed or showcased in this video. Thanks for tuning into this episode of SoundSpeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more interesting microphones, cool products, and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.